if you disagree with me, please unsubscribe. That just comes down to taste, babes. And we are just pretending that it's not a work night. Hey besties, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be reacting to your hot takes. A few weeks ago, I reached out on my community tab and I asked you all, what are your unpopular bookish opinions? And I'm here today to be the judge of whether or not they're valid. I got over 200 submissions and I chose the ones that I felt like were the spiciest. And let me just say, I don't believe I'm going to be making friends with this video because if I don't agree with you, I'm gonna say it. And to make this video even more chaotic, I'm going to be drinking while I react to your opinion. So every time I agree with you, I will take a sip. I have this really fun cup that I got at Top Golf when I went with my coworkers for like a work event and they had these like really, um, sorry, I was like cracking this open. They had these like really, oh, if you just saw that spill, no you didn't. So the first opinion is content creators who rate half their reads as five stars are pointless. I get where this person is coming from because I think what they're saying is that if they come across a book reviewer who rates everything really highly, they don't trust their opinion. But the reason I don't agree with this is that this is a case by case basis. Like obviously there are plenty of people who are not tough critics and so perhaps you just don't align with them. I guess for me, it just comes down to what books are they giving five stars? What's their reasoning? Because a lot of people are very in touch with their book taste and so there might be a booktuber who just knows what kinds of books are going to give five stars and they're really good at picking out books for themselves. And then obviously there's other people who just rate everything five stars. And I think you just have to use your discretion. And I'm also one of those people that I watch a lot of content creators, not really for their book taste, but also for their personality. So I feel like to go ahead and say that they're pointless is a little bit too strong for me. Okay, this next one I agree with wholeheartedly and that is there should be standard book sizes for hardcovers and paperbacks. Yes, Lord, please, especially when a book is from the same series. I hate when they release multiple books in a series and they're different heights. Like I have to take a big drink for this. That's how much I agree with this. Just so we all know, I'm filming this on a Tuesday night. So I do have work tomorrow, but luckily I work from home. Okay, so the next one is listening to audiobooks at two times speed takes away from the experience. I do not agree with this. Literally, I'll dump out my drink. That's how much I disagree with this. I listen to audiobooks sometimes up to three times speed. Not gonna lie, I've even listened to an audiobook at like 3.1, 3.2 speed on Audible. This is definitely the part of the video where we're getting into me disagreeing with you all and you perhaps unsubscribing because I'm going to be offensive. Also, obviously I'm not calling any particular person out about whose opinion this is. I've actually gone ahead and deleted the post where you all submitted your opinion so no one can track this back to you so don't feel personally attacked because I don't even remember who is who because I like took them and made these little canva graphics and I don't re even remember who said this oh I'm already stumbling over my words and I've only drank well I guess I drank that much really fast I just disagree with you because if you watch my channel if you're here you're watching my channel you like my book opinions you take my opinion seriously how do you think it ruined my experience if I was able to tell you everything that happened in the book. I mean, if you don't have good listening comprehension and you can't listen to people talking that fast, that's on you. But this neurodivergent girl who already talks really fast, like I already personally sound like I'm on two times speed. So I can understand and it's not my fault that you don't know how to do that. So, oh wait, I'm only supposed to drink when I disagree. I'm already forgetting the rules. Okay, this next one says, books with only a plot revolving around romance are boring. And I'm gonna take a little half sip of this because I do enjoy romance. I read that genre all the time, but I kind of get what this person is saying. I think what they're saying is there's just like so much out there to enjoy. I actually have a screenshot of what they said. Why read a book about a hockey player getting with an ice skater when you can read about fairies, dragons, assassins, and people with magical powers and magic plus? Okay, actually I take back my half a sip. I only read what I had like edited into the little graphic and then I had a screenshot of what they said. And so I was thinking they were just saying that like, they like when there's more to the plot and that's why I gave half a drink. But if you're just saying straight up, why read ro romance when you could be reading fantasy? That just comes down to taste, babes. Like, if someone doesn't like to read fantasy, they don't like to read fantasy. I think prologues, especially for fantasy, should be banned. <laughs> This one's very funny because then they said, please don't make it more complicated by telling me what happened 10,000 years ago to some random dude who has no connection to the story. <laughs> that is so true, I have to sit for this. Ooh, this next one I'm not gonna take a sip for and that is there's too much negative content on booktube. This one really confuses me because if you're subscribed to my channel, like if you like me, then you obviously like negative content. Like if you're even watching this video, this video is a bit negative because I don't know, I just hate this complaint because I get that there's people who just like to shit on books for the fun of it and like that's kind of what their content's all about and I think it's totally valid to not wanna watch that. Like if you are someone that just enjoys positivity, I personally am a petty bitch so I enjoy hearing a rant here and there. So I just don't really understand how you could have that opinion and then watch my channel, especially because I roast books all the time because I am a very, very critical and tough 
reader. They also said, it makes me wonder if a lot of these people even enjoy reading. And of course they enjoy reading. I'm sure that they split their time up between reading things that they want to hate read and then also reading things that they enjoy. I feel like, yes, there's always going to be negative content. And if you don't want to watch it, don't engage with it. And maybe if it annoys you that that's the most popular stuff, sit back and think, okay, well, even if I don't like it, obviously most people like it because let me run my views back for you. People only watch my channel when I do negative shit. Like I will do a positive concept and you all will be like, yes, please. Like I love when you read for pleasure, blah, blah, blah. But then the views don't reflect that. And obviously I don't care. I'm going to do whatever I want on my channel. I'm going to continue to read what I like and then also read for fun to like make fun of things. But at the end of the day, this is just a weird take to put on Sarah Without an H's channel. Okay. The next one is annotating every book is anal and unnecessary. And unfortunately, I don't agree with you on that because that just feels like you're way too concerned with what other people are doing with their books. Like, so what if people want to highlight and annotate everything and make it look cute and aesthetic? Like, that's fun. That's cute. I don't want to do that. I'm not interested in doing that. I don't really enjoy like writing in books or highlighting things, but I feel like if that enriches people's reading experiences, just let them do it. Also, even if they are just doing it for aesthetics, I love things for aesthetics. I did my hair like this for aesthetics. I put makeup on for aesthetics. You guys really were spicy when you were giving me these opinions. I kind of forgot this next one was in here, but it says it's unhealthy to have a 200 plus book collection. Go to the damn library. What if we have a 200 plus book collection and we go to the library? I don't even know if I own 200 books. I know I definitely own at least 100. I almost entirely listen to audiobooks. So every book you see here on the shelf is actually just for show for my videos and the aesthetics and also because I just really enjoy like supporting authors and having books that I love and like putting them on display but I also use Libby like it's my job because I literally review books so it kind of is like a part-time job for me so I don't really know what you're getting at here like sorry you want to support authors collecting books because they're pretty and not reading them is silly let me reiterate that I read almost 99.99% by audiobooks. And this whole collection is just books that I collect because I think they're pretty. Look at this. This is a special edition of Pride and Prejudice. Have you ever physically read it? No. This is the special edition of Trust the World Sea. Have I flipped through it for the illustrations? Yes, but have I physically read it? No. Oh my God, look at all these sprayed edges. I have not physically read any of these books. I have this special edition of Pride and Prejudice. I have this version of Persuasion. Look how many repeats of books I have. Why do you care what I do with my grown ass money? Also, I'm sorry, I'm supporting these authors. I mean, I guess Jane Austen's dead. That was a bad example. I'm so sorry. That was, okay, I'm supporting these authors. Do I think that special editions are a little too expensive sometimes and it's a little stupid and capitalistic? Yes, yes, yes. And I don't love how book boxes do special editions where it's like a limited quantity and you have to like get online at a certain time to get it and then you don't get the book that you want and then people resell them and there's this whole resale culture. Obviously, I think all that's super shitty and I don't love capitalism, but I feel like if you want to have a pretty copy of a book you love, you should be allowed to do that. Okay, we're trying a new flavor. This one is called Sun Crush Tequila Cocktail and we are just pretending that it's not a work night. Pride and Prejudice is just people walking in and out of each other's houses. I obviously just showed you how many copies Pride and Prejudice I have, I have quite a few. So I don't agree with this. Like I get what you're saying and the reason I included this is because that is so funny. The actual actions of what they're doing is just going to each other's houses constantly. But there's so much complexity like in the character relationships and like how they perceive one another and society and how some people look down on certain people and different things. Like there's a lot more class discussion and examination and character complexity going on. So I feel like maybe just books like that aren't your thing, which is totally fine. But I just included this because I thought that was very funny. It did make me chuckle and made me LOL. Dark romance makes makes me worried for humanity. Yes, girl, me too, me too. On the one hand, I'm like, let people have fun. It's a free country. Don't judge them. All the stuff I was saying before. And then the other hand, I'm a little concerned for the girlies who were like a little too much dark romance. Like it's one thing if you're like, oh my God, I'm so bad. I love this like weird serial killer stalker romance. La, la, la. <laughs> but then there's people who are like, well, only read dark romance. And those people, I'm concerned for. Maybe they're just into kink though. I don't know. I don't know. I'm too vanilla to like really be the judge of this, but I am a little worried for humanity. I am. The next one is all books should have a trigger warnings section. And to that, I say cheers. I agree. I think it's just common decency to let people know. And if you think the trigger warnings are spoilers, you just skip over that section of the book. Like if it's in the audiobook or the ebook or the physical book, just skip over that part. Did you skip? It's fine. People should be more aware when shaming people to use libraries and not pirating. Not everyone lives in the global north and can afford books or have access to libraries. The newest popular book I can find at my local library is The Order of the Phoenix and a book here is as expensive as my electric bill. I really agree with this because I feel like there's just certain places in the world where 
they want the gift of reading and there is not a way for them to do it in a way that makes sense financially or freely and I know that an author would probably be offended by me having this opinion. It's like almost the same thing as like getting it from a library. Like they didn't get a library, like they didn't steal it online. If they had the means, they would buy it. And I guess if they do pirate everything that they read, whatever. I don't know. I buy all these fucking special editions and all these things. I am trying to do all this to support the authors and I will make up for the rest of you who aren't able to do that. And I support you in your plight of not being able to do it. Maybe this is a hot take. I agree with this person. I do. I do. I feel like in certain circumstances, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Let people read 300 books a year without freaking out about it. Oh my god, I agree with this so much. This is absolutely in favor of what I've been saying. Um, just let people do whatever they want to do because I hate when people are like, I don't believe it when people read this many books. It's okay that other people want to read 300 books. It's okay if you want to read four books. It's okay if you want to read zero books. Just let people live. I don't have the time to do that, nor, nor the desire or the stamina. And if someone can read 300 books in a year, I'm like, that's amazing. There's only 352 days in a year. So I'm just like, that's amazing. Wait, is it 352? This next one? is honestly a slay. It says we should stop only teaching established classics in schools. And I agree with this so much. If I had been in school and instead of having to read stupid like Jane Eyre or whatever, wouldn't it be such a slay to let kids read like Hunger Games? It's like, why do you need them to keep reading Where the Red Fern Grows or like fucking, I don't know, what am I thinking of? Like Macbeth when they could be reading other stuff. This next person said, I love Breaking the Spines of Books. I'm not going to take a drink because I don't agree with that. I actually do not enjoy Breaking the Spines of Books, but I support you. I'm going to take a little half step in support of you loving that. And I don't think that you have to treat your books like everyone else. Like I like to keep my books pristine. Because like I said, they're kind of props for my filming and everything. But if you just like to just get in there and make them look like like really red, well read and like really like you really loved them, I love that for you. I really do. Okay, this next one grinds my gears so fucking bad to the point where if you disagree with me, please unsubscribe. Like I have actually personally already put my tombstone there ready to go because I'm dying on this hill. Because this next person said, Audiobooks do not count as real reading. If you think audiobooks don't count as real reading, fuck you. Literally fuck you and your ableist fucking little ass. You're so obsessed with semantics that you're gonna discount certain people as readers. I already said this earlier in the video. 99.999% of the books that I read, I read via audio. And you're gonna sit here and call me not a reader. If you have this opinion and you have enjoyed my channel at any point, how do you trust my reviews if I'm not a reader? Did I really take in the things? Also, like I said earlier with the not being able to listen to books fast or whatever, like sorry your listening comprehension is bad and you can't listen to audiobooks like sorry about it oh my god it's just so elitist there's so many like reasons why this is just such a stupid thing obviously there's plenty of people who number one have like dyslexia so they listen to audiobooks for that reason blind people people who suffer from like uh, mental fog or like migraines and they just like looking at a physical book doesn't really work for them some people have a really long commute every day and they have children and they're busy and so they just like listening to audiobooks while they're cleaning or driving or whatever is the only way that they can read listening comprehension is actually a skill that not everyone has like some people with adhd like me really love listening to audiobooks because it helps me like pay attention and whatever and i struggle with physically reading versus other people who are neurodivergent sometimes listening to audiobooks is too distracting and it really just comes down to personal preference on whether or not you can read that way so at the end of the day if you are discounting people who listen to audiobooks because you think it's the easy way out honestly audiobooks are typically longer than it would take to physically read like if you're a really fast reader an audiobook would actually slow you down even if you're listening to it at a faster speed so i don't know anyway sorry this is a, my rant hopefully it was coherent i feel like i should have put this opinion a lot earlier because i am now basically drunk okay we're going on a lighter note this next person said sometimes less is more when it comes to smut and romance books and oh my god yes please yes i am getting almost like conservative now when i read romance like sometimes there's just too many details like sometimes they be talking about the fluids and the this and the that and the booty to the crack and i'm like oh my god please stop and whenever i read like a demure kind of sensual sex scene where it's like i know what's going on but it's not super detailed like saying fucking pussy and cock i like that more and I, even if that makes me ancient, like obviously no shade to you if you like a raunchy sex scene, I love that for you. I just personally don't like that. I don't like that at all. I don't like fluids. I don't like cum. It's, it's not good for me. Oh my God, this next one could not disagree more. This person said, I love the surprise pregnancy trunk. 
Did my patron Jana write this? Because Jana loves surprise pregnancy. Like, no, no, I cannot agree to that. I will not be taking a sip. Okay, this next one is a culmination of a lot of people saying this. There's a lot of different ways that you all said this, but I do agree with you. And that is people on book covers is ugly. The only time that I like it is on like the vintage mass market paper romances. I think that's like so campy and cute and fun. Nonfiction is better than fiction. I rarely read nonfiction and if I do, I read like memoirs. Also, this person went on to say that they feel like they're smarter than other people because they read nonfiction and I'm just like, okay. Okay, this next one is spilling, preaching, telling the gospel truth. I think books should have an age rating like films do. I agree with this so entirely, especially with the rise of like Colleen Hoover and Sarah J Moss and all these books on TikTok. It's okay if you're like 14 or 15 and you wanna read books that have sex in them. That's up to you and your parents to decide if you are mature enough to handle that. But one of my best friends is a middle school teacher and she said that she has seen kids carrying around like Sierra Simone and Colleen Hoover and Sarah J Maas and that makes me so afraid for them like a 12 or a 13 year old that is so scary like you should not be reading Colleen Hoover when your brain is so mush like that like you're so young like, don't read that this next person said a love interest being mean to everyone else but the main character isn't cute and I honestly agree with that. When I was younger, I was like super into the bad boy character. Like when I watched Vampire Diaries, I liked Damon. Whenever I read books, I would always ship the main character with the bad guy. Now I'm like, I don't know, what happened to being nice to people? Like what happened to being nice to everyone? Like I would rather have a boyfriend that was nice to people than a boyfriend that was only nice to me. Cause then it's like, if he's never nice to your friends or everyone around you, you're gonna have to like always defend him to people because people are gonna be like, oh my God, your boyfriend is kind of a dick. And you're gonna have to be like, no, you just don't know him. Like he's nice to me. Like we all have a friend who said that about their significant other and it doesn't sound good when they say it. Oh my God, I could not agree with this next one more. We need to bring back the classic bodice ripper romance covers. I was literally just saying this. <laughs> I literally have started a collection of these bodice ripper covers because I think they're so fun and cute. Like this one is literally a book by Fabio. Who knew that Fabio wrote books? Honestly, he probably didn't write this. This is probably ghost written by someone else. But Fabio is very famous for posing for these Boss Ripper covers and I am obsessed. Like, I think these are so campy and so fun. Like, is the content of these probably very problematic because they're written in like the 80s and 90s? Absolutely. But I love Boss Ripper's covers. Normalize true slow burns. If they kiss by the end of the book, I'm not interested. And honestly, I do agree with this. I feel like, especially if you're gonna do like a long running series that's three, four, five, six, whatever, how many books, if you drag out them kissing, I will probably like it. Like there are a few slow burn series that I really enjoyed, like Veronica Speedwell and also the Dark Fever series, like ones where you're like truly like, if you guys don't fuck in the next book, I actually might unalive myself. Friends to lovers is better than enemies to lovers. Oh my God, I could not drink to that more. Two characters who love and respect each other so much they don't want to mess up their friendship but they have this insatiable desire to fuck one another because they just know each other so intimately <gasps> nothing gets me going more friends to lovers is so fucking good it's so good this next person i support you entirely they said i count my dnfs towards my reading goal and i'm gonna sip in solidarity i think tiktok has pushed down the quality of books i don't know if i agree with you i'm on the fence because in some ways I think that TikTok has allowed a lot of books to become tr traditionally Oh my god, traditionally was a really hard word for me being this drunk. I think that TikTok has allowed a lot of books that would not normally have been traditionally published to become traditionally published. It's like allowed a platform for a lot of authors who are a little bit more like indie self-publishing vibes. And I think to a lot of people who enjoy books with like a certain level of prose or editing. Uh, I think they struggle with these books now being in the spotlight. You know, like thousands and thousands and thousands of people are enjoying these books, right? I might not enjoy them. You might not enjoy enjoy them but there are obviously a lot of people enjoying them so i'm like they i guess are now the new norm and i guess it's just we have to like readjust the way that we decipher what we want to read and it kind of comes down to like are you reading what's popular just because a lot of people are saying they like it or are you reading to your own taste? In my opinion, there's always been books that have been traditionally published that I have not enjoyed. Like back in my YA days or my current days, like for example, Hot Take, I don't think Tessa Bailey is a very good author, but her books have always been traditionally published. And there's a lot of romance books with those stupid cartoon covers. <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> that I've never thought were very good. Perhaps more books are getting through the cracks that don't have good writing, but 
is that really TikTok's fault? Because obviously the masses are telling you what they like. Okay, this next one is actually not a hot take or an opinion. It's just a statement, but I agree with it. The girls never pee after sex in books, but they also never have UTIs. And I agree with this sentiment. So if you are newer to my channel, you might not know that I grew up in a religious cult. It was a very controlling non-denominational church where obviously premarital sex was not a thing. And so I didn't really learn a lot about like sex education. So when I had sex for the first time, I was like 25 years old and I barely knew where my fucking clit was. Like I didn't know anything. I'd never masturbated growing up. Like it was a sin. Like I didn't know anything about my body. And so I had sex with my first boyfriend and I didn't pee after and all of a sudden I had like blood in my pee and I didn't know what was going on. And I found out that I probably had a UTI. So I had to go to urgent care the next day. And I found out you're supposed to pee after sex. And it was like, oh my God, is this common knowledge amongst people? Maybe it is. It was not common knowledge amongst myself. I don't know. I always think about this when I read romance books because there's so many movie, not even just romance books, like movies too, where they like have sex and they just go to sleep after. Especially in romance books where they be having sex in every angle, every diagonal, every like which way. They're flipping the girl around like 360, like 10 times in a row and they're just having sex for like hours and she don't pee after. Okay, this next person said, I really didn't like Manicold boring and way too fucking long. So if you don't know, Manicold is a very famous Dramini fan fiction where it got so popular on TikTok and everywhere to the point where the author Sunlin Yu, I don't know what their real name is, they have now gotten a book deal and so Manicold is now going to be turned into a traditionally published book. I have to say the reason I included this one is because I actually have read Manicold. I started a vlog last year where I was reading fan fiction for the first time because fun fact about me is I never grew up reading fan fiction. I just wasn't into it. So I started reading it for a video. So I read Manigold and I actually agree with this person. So basically the whole concept was I was going to call the video like reading fan fiction for the first time. Am I a Dramini shipper now? Like something like that. And um, I did read Manigold for that video. Oh my god, am I repeating myself? I am for sure. Anyway, I read it and I vlogged it, but I'm not continue because the next fan fiction that I was going to read was um, All the Young Dudes, which is the Marauders era fan fiction. So if you want me to finish that um, vlog, let me know in the description. Comment. No, the what? The comments. Okay, our last opinion is no book should be longer than 350 pages. And to that, we're going to finish this here drink because I do agree with that. Okay, the reason that I have to agree is because there are so many fucking romance books that I've read recently that are over 350 pages for no fucking reason. I'm like, for what reason did this book need to be so long? Like, the only time a book should be over, over 350 pages is if it's, like, a, a really complex fantasy book. And even then, sometimes I still feel like you could have cut off, like, 100 pages. I'm saying this publicly, loudly. Why is your book so long? But anyway, that brings me to the end of this video of me reacting to all of your hot takes. I hope that I did well by all of you. I know that some of the things I said might have upset you if I agreed or disagreed with you. And it is a Tuesday night where I'm having to work and technically it's already Wednesday because it's past midnight and I do have to wake up for work. So I'm gonna have to literally guzzle water after I finish filming. <laughs> if you made it to the end of this video, feel free to use a butterfly emoji in your comment down below if you feel so obliged. And I thank you all so much for watching. You're all beautiful. Have a nice day.